This is the Google Pixel 3a and I didn't want to make this video. But then you guys... So I guess we're doing it. Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So the reason I didn't want to make this video is I think it's too early. I think that a review video should be taken over a period of time. Once you've had a chance to put your SIM card into your new phone, you had an opportunity to use it in the real world, where you've got over the oohs and ahs of a brand new phone and you got over any of the quirks that you're simply not used to because of your previous phone. To me, over a period of time, that's a review. This was only recently sent to me by Google, which thank you very much for doing that. So it's too early to have a review. There's lots of those reviews five minutes after they got a hold of the phone. And to me, that's not a review. That's the first impressions. But because you guys have asked for camera information about the Google Pixel 3a, I thought, let me give you a first impressions of the camera, which is what this video is all about. So sit back and let's go through those features. Okay, let's fire up the camera app on the Google Pixel 3a. There we go. And now you'll notice a black bar. Now what that black bar is, it's telling me that my shot is going to be out of focus because I'm too close to it. Let's simulate that again. There we go. And there's the black bar. So if I go further back, and I hold the camera steady, I'm going to be able to take a better picture. So it's nice that the cameras have got some sort of intelligence already helping you to be able to snap just better shots. Next up, you hit the magnifying glass and you got this plus and minus that allows you to zoom into specific brackets. And when you tap somewhere on the screen, it focuses the attention there. And then of course you can play up and down with your light meter, giving you more or less light as you need to. If you want to zoom in another way, of course you can simply use the good old pinch and zoom method. At the top of the camera app, you'll see this little timer. Essentially, that is your um, timer. You can set it to three second delay or 10 seconds delay, but you cannot set it to anything beyond that. It's off three or 10. Alrighty, next up is the motion option. This is basically, I've got an option of off, auto or motion on. And essentially what it does is it takes a couple of pictures just before you took your final picture, compiling it into a little animated GIF movie, little clip like this. Great for kids, great for animals, things of that nature. When you just want to take it just before they took the shot, what happened? While some people absolutely love it, some people couldn't really care about this feature at all. But it's there if you want it. Okay, let's go play with some settings. So basically you hit the more button and now you've got a whole bunch of different options to look at. Now, the first time that you see this, it's going to have a little dot next to it telling you that you haven't actually used the feature. When you touch it, it will tell you what each feature actually does. I've just used a lot of them already. Right, let's go into settings and let's start going through them. The first option is to be able to save your location, your camera sound that makes a little horrible ticking sound when it takes a picture. You can disable that, which is great. Then you've got the Google Lens suggested. This is actually pretty good. I don't know why more people don't use it. So let's enable that. Watch what happens. I've got a memory stick card there. I can take a picture of it. And then Google Lens will actually recognize the text, recognize the item, and tell me more information about this product. Look at that. That works really well on monuments, in recipes, text to speech. The more you use Google Lens, the more you'll appreciate just how powerful this actually is. So definitely go and play with that. So clearly I was a little bit distracted by the Google Lens. So let's move on to gestures now. So here under the volume keys, you've got a couple of actions you can choose. The shutter, in other words, taking a photo, a zoom, or the volume, or off, essentially. Choose the one that suits you. I also like this idea of being able to double tap when it zooms in, and double tap, and it zooms out. That's actually pretty handy as well. Okay, back into settings we go. Okay, the first option is the show dirty lens warning. I don't know why you would want to disable that. If your lens is dirty, it will tell you about it. The next one, which I'm actually quite surprised is actually hidden here, is the HDR plus control. Just to enable that, it's going to give you a better option to take better shots. And you can enable or disable it per um, photo that you take. The one at the bottom, store videos efficiently. Of course, I want to enable that. I don't shoot in RAW, so I don't actually enable that at all. You see at the top here, it just added the HDR. So why would you hide that? 
Okay, and back into settings we go. This time let's go further down into photos and here you can set the how many megapixels you want, what the aspect ratio. I always tend to go for the highest, so at 14 by three at 12.2 megapixels. Right, front facing camera, and this time the most you can go is eight megapixels at 14 by three ratio as well. Carry on further down, you're gonna go into video. The back camera can go to 4K at 30 frames per second, the front camera up to HD at 1080p. Right, once you've selected that, make sure that you've got video stabilization on, and now comes the show and tell part of this video. I'm gonna show you some sample footage. Stabilization on, 4K, 30 frames per second. Stabilization's on, 4K, 30 frames per second, rear camera. Stabilization off, rear camera, 30 frames per second. Stabilization on, rear camera, HD. Stabilization on, rear camera, HD. Stabilization off, rear camera, HD. Stabilization off, rear camera, HD. This is a camera test, the front facing camera, um, HD, quiet, in the car, not going. Stabilization is on, front facing camera, HD, still driving. Stabilization is off, front facing camera, just driving. All right, some more cool features. Go back into settings, this time choose time lapse. Don't be afraid of it, experiment with this. It's actually pretty cool. So here you got a couple of settings that you can play with. Essentially think of this as the speed of your shots. So let me show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna start recording, got my little ducky. This is a very, very intense scene. Things are going wrong, ducky's turning around. Who did it? I don't know. Here is the next duck coming in. Okay, can you find the mystery? No, I cannot. He's out of there too, eventually. Right, who's next? And basically, now we have the murder. Okay, there we go, right. So basically, this is my scene, right? Typically, this will be um, a pretty long and boring thing just to simply watch. But with time lapse, let me show you how that translates. And this is what the same effect looks like whilst shooting outside your window whilst in the car. Another cool effect to play with is slow motion. So let's fire that up and record another fascinating scene. And here are the results. The sound is awesome. Now with slow motions, you actually have two speeds that you can choose. This was the first one. I'm gonna tap on it to get you the second one and show you the difference. Well, it's not an exact comparison, you can clearly see that the one on the right is slower than the one on the left. And when it comes to snapping normal photos, as you can see, it's pretty good colors, good zoom, nice details, and I'm pretty impressed with the camera overall so far. So that is it. That is the first impressions of those cameras. So far, so good. I'm really impressed with the kind of quality that you get out of this device. 4K camera, 30 frames per second out of a 399 device is pretty darn good. What kind of tests should I do next? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Give it two thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the head below to subscribe. If you like this kind of content, check out some of these other cool videos down here. And I'll see you over there.